the new business as usual. This is an experiment, experiment you might say. We want to share that with you. We want to talk to you about the evolution, the concept of uh, CAVI, uh, the CAVI Convening for Action on Vancouver Island Initiative. And we say the new business as usual. What we're trying to move towards is accepting the new ways we do business as the regular way we should do business. In other words, capture the innovation, the creativity, and the partnerships that are required to look at the, uh, the changes we need. The question and the central question that we put out there is, what is the next 50 years going to bring for Vancouver Island? And going from there and backcasting to where we are, what should we be doing now to get to that vision? If I may sidestep and use a quotation which is always, uh, I found very uh, relative to what we're talking about. And it was captured in, a, in an old church in England, Sussex, England in 1766. It said simply this, a vision without a task is but a dream. A task without a vision is but drudgery. A vision with a task is the hope of the world. And putting that into context of Vancouver Island, it is the hope for Vancouver Island. Nothing short. The three powerful words here are vision, task, and hope. Vision to see and take the tenacity, the, 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 the courage to look at something we want to see together collectively in Vancouver Island in the next 50 years. The task is to put together an incredible strategy and the hope is to have the courage, the determination to carry it through. Or, as Obama would say these days, yes we can. And so it is with that concept that we're looking at working with, with the, with the Convening for Action. We're looking at creative water centricity planning. Everything that we've heard today, everything without exception, if you truly boil it down, we end up with water. Whether we're talking about fisheries, development, energy, whatever it be, it is water. So we've made the centerpiece of this vision water centricity to create livable communities in balance with ecology. And we heard excellent presentations this morning about the challenges we're having. And I would argue it's because we're still talking past each other. We still haven't got to the point where we're truly knitting together and finding the solution. What is Caveat about well, how did it start out? It started, as it says in this first bullet, with an idea and a conversation. It started far earlier than that. It started in the year 2002 or 3. At that time, I was still working in the ministry, and I was also working on the board of PCWWA. A combination of these two things with colleagues, we took ourselves up and down Vancouver Island. We asked the same question. How does it go? What's Vancouver Island going to look like in 50 years? And we got the same, oh, I don't know. But at the same time, there was a sense of urgency that they wanted to talk about it and establish some way of collaborating. Because what you found was the north of the island is not really talking to the south and the east is not talking to the west. So we thought, well, why don't we pull these people together? And we did in 2005. There were selected 40 of same with the widest, widest group of people you can imagine. Three levels of government. We certainly had the academics there. We had the NGOs there. We had the First Nations there. We had the business sector there. Put them all in the room. They had it facilitated and said, what are the issues? No surprise to you, the issues are stuff that you all talk about. They've been popping up today. Governance, sustainability, growth, education, watershed protection, climate change, conservation, and funding, and more. 
So from there, what we did was we took, uh, we, we got a half day involvement in the water in the city, which is a major conference in Victoria in 2006. Out of that came the cabinet, convening for action in Vancouver Island. You cannot look up the pages, the yellow pages, and see CAVI because it ain't there. CAVI is a concept. By virtue of the fact that we are talking and sharing, you're CAVI, we are CAVI, we're all CAVI together. So with that, we talk about sharing knowledge, ideas, creating partnerships, and going forward from, from them. Local government is expanding to include local government, senior government, Development community, First Nations, consulting community, academia, public, as I've already said. So it brings together those who plan and regulate, those who build developers, and those who provide the legislative framework. Clearly, the idea is to share ideas, and Kim will talk about that in much more depth. But today, we've had not bad success in the sense of working with the CRD. Cowichan Regional District, Nanaimo Regional District, Comox Strathcona, simply providing a forum for them to bring their ideas and share it. The other thing about CAVI which I think has strength, it's not the government dictating the show, it's not the private sector dictating the show, but they're all involved. Academics involved, citizens involved, and I feel it's only with that collective approach that perhaps we can reach the destination we all want to go to. So what is it? We seek a common vision. We create learning opportunities and networking opportunities. We focus fundamentally on the relationship between land and water. We promote the sharing of ideas and experience. So it's truly about connecting people. Because I think it's where it's at. There's a tendency for all of us to shut it off and say, well, that's the government's problem. It's not. It's everyone's problem. We're all in the tough to go. I want to close with two quotations, and they're chosen particularly because they're very disparate and wide apart, but they both are bookends in the problem. One is from Lester Brown's book. I don't think you've seen that. It's one of the latest books that I've read. Brown says, he calls the book Mobilization to Save Civilization. Since we have the technologies to restructure the world energy economy and stabilize climate, the challenge now is to build the political will to do so. Saving civilization is not a spectator sport. Each of us has a leading role to play. And again, coming back to what we discussed about Cavi, is it's not a spectator sport. We're all in this together. The other one, which, and I see some of my colleagues from Time gone by, uh, Brian Tutty, Ken Ashley, Al Lil, and Jim and Bernabelle are all people that taught me a lot when I was in the fisheries side of things, which I was for part of my career. And I still remember Brian Tutty always bringing this grounding commentary as we were dealing with challenges in the fisheries area. And he referred to Aldo, Aldo, Aldo Leopold's Assan County Almond. Wisdom, if ever there was one. And I think it's part of the issue that we're talking about. We abuse the land because we regard it as a commodity belonging to us. When we see the land as a community to which we belong, we may begin to use it with love and respect. So this is a hard nose engineer you're talking to. I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I'm just saying that you need to have the compassion and we need to have the pragmatism, pragmatism to bring these two together. One last thing I'm going to mention. Things do happen when people collaborate. I read in the paper the other day, water flows anew at Jordan River Dam. I can remember in 1992, sitting in an office in Vancouver, in Victoria. Marvin Rosenau was there. I don't know if anyone knows Marvin. He was the guy that said, it's time to share the goodies. That guy had more courage than Gareth. Ken Ashley was involved with it too. What did they do? And it was very uncomfortable for senior management. This is taking on BC Hydro. 
saying there's going to be a place for fisheries and hydro. There were endless meetings, endless meetings. But there you are. He came through, and now it's a given way for doing business. In this case, it's Jordan River. So I just end up with that note that I'm always a believer that where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm very understanding about one of the things I'm involved with with obesity, water and waste is, is the climate change, chair of that. And the stuff that Brendan's talking about is real. But we must move on and try to find those partnerships. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Kim to give us the rest of the story.